I want to thank everyone for coming this morning. You know, I want to talk about a new program we're going to be implementing. We are, this administration is about moving the needle and trying different things. And we want to approach domestic violence in a little bit of a different way. You know, it is a real stain on our community. And when you think about the diversity of this community, there's no place for domestic violence. And yet, you know, as humans, human beings, it's part of the sad nature of all of us, and we need to make sure we do better. You know, the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence says about 20 people every minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States. Every minute. And that's 10 million people, mainly women but some men, per year in our country. And we face those same challenges here in the city and county of Honolulu. But the really good news is that there's two organizations now that are going to be working very closely together. One is our fine men and women in blue standing with me today, the Honolulu Police Department. As you know, we rank as one of the safest big cities in the United States of America in terms of violent crime and gun violence. And I keep saying this because I'm really proud, safest in the country, and other types of crime, one of the safest. And it's because of the hard work of these men and women standing with me today. So they're stepping up, but we're also stepping up with another organization, um, Domestic Violence Action Center, which Nancy Creedman represents. And the two of them are coming together. They form a team, a special team called SOS, which stands for Safe on Scene. And this is occurring because the, the, the city's Department of Community Services, and Yuri Nakata is the director, that's why he's here, is providing a grant of 200000 to work with Nancy and HPD to see if they can't come up with a better approach when HPD is called to the scene because of domestic violence. It's going to be a, a, when, when the police show up, they'll show up with one of Nancy's trained specialists. And they're going to work together as they come into the crime scene. Because right now what happens is the police are called to a scene where there's domestic violence. And they're busy dealing with both the victim and trying to deal with the suspect, if the suspect is still there, and of course getting all the information they need at the crime scene. And it's hard to do both. And it's a really intense situation. You think about the person who's been abused and they're trying to calm that person down, while at the same time wondering, is the suspect somewhere that could hurt others and hurt this person again, and then just getting the information. And this allows HPD to focus more on the suspect and getting the information at the crime scene and would allow this specialist to sit down with, with the victim and calm them down and help them through this horrible experience um, so that they can get on the road to recovery. And it provides crisis support. Uh, it'll provide safety planning and advocacy for the victim because it usually doesn't end there. They need to bring charges um, and to help them through this crisis, particularly when it's an intimate partner who does the abuse, which occurs in so many different situations. The program is going to, it's a pilot. It's going to go from 2 to 11, at, 2 in the afternoon to 11 at night. It's going to cover just the eastern side of our island from basically Waikiki all the way down to Hawaii Kai. It's called East Honolulu. It's about 40 square miles. Last year, well, in 2015, there were 591 abuse cases or protective order violations or other related domestic violence uh, situations that the police were called to. That's a lot. And that's going to be a challenge for Nancy and her team, but I know they're up to it. And the goal is to improve on-site support to survivors and the police officers so they can better do their job. And um, we're going to be collecting data along the way. We're going to determine outcomes, and we're going to see how we make improvements. And then we turn this pilot into a permanent program. Um, once we get everything, all the information that we need. It's outside of the box kind of thinking that we haven't done before. Um, but it's also tackling a problem that is still with us and will probably always remain with us, but we can do a better job in addressing it. And with that, I want to thank a few folks uh, who are here today and ask them to say a few words. First is um, Deputy Chief Marie McCulley, um, who's had a lot of experience in this area and her background as a police officer dealing with domestic violence. Chief McCulley, come Thank on up and say a few words. Thanks. I've worked with uh, Nancy for the past 25 years on uh, problems with, um, involving domestic violence. And um, this program 
will enable the officers to go to the scene, do their jobs, make it an arrest, hopefully, and then uh, leave the victim in caring hands um, along with the domestic violence advocate who can talk to them about how to get a temporary restraining order or, or go to a safe place and um, actually calm the victim down. Usually the victim is hysterical at this point. Calm the victim down and calm the children down so that the children aren't scared. So um, we're looking forward to this program and working with her to um, put an end to domestic violence. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Really appreciate it. I didn't even think about the children and calming them down, too. Jerry Inouye, um, Assistant Chief of Honolulu Police Department, who, whose bureau includes the CID. Um, please step up and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. One of the biggest challenges facing HPD when it comes to domestic violence is breaking a cycle of violence. We can no longer think that it's our responsibility is limited to responding to the scene, making an arrest, uh, doing the investigation, and then forgetting about the case. We want to make sure that the cycle of violence is broken. So to that end, uh, Safe on Streets is really going to help us. Instead of us just handing out a referral card for social services and shelter, we'll be putting them in touch with a live counselor who's going to help them through the process. So we're hoping that this uh, will be a big help in breaking a cycle of domestic violence. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next up is uh, Larry Lawson. He's a major Home Police Department Criminal Investigation Division, and thank you for being here and helping. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks. Hi, as the major of the Criminal Investigation Division, it's my job in my, uh, within my division for my detail detectives to investigate domestic violence. And domestic violence destroys families, so it's our job to try to help wherever we can. One in four women will be victims of domestic violence in their lifetime. That's moms, wives, daughters, and it's our job to think out, the, out of the box, like the mayor said, to stop domestic violence. And that's why we've been working with DVAC on this program, and we've been working with her, with Nancy, for quite a long time to get this program off the, off the ground and get it running. And we're looking forward to the successes we're going to have with this program, and hopefully we can expand it outside of East Honolulu to other parts of the island. Thank you. Thank you. You know, a while ago I was the majority leader of the State House of Representatives, and um, I think in my last year, 2008, we recognized Nancy Creedman on the floor of the... Uh, the House um, on the opening day because of what she's done for the decades of fighting to try to reduce domestic violence. And one thing she taught me that I've remembered all since then is that domestic violence is not so much a woman's issue, it's a man's issue. It's about training men to be better men and training our sons and younger folks, younger men, to be better men. It doesn't mean in every case, but in so many, as you mentioned, so many women that suffer domestic violence, one in four, it's unacceptable. She's been fighting this cause for a long, long time, and she never stops. And now she's stepping up here. Now I'm over at the city, and we're getting together, and she's going to help make sure that more women are taken care of when there is domestic violence. Thank you, Nancy, for being here. Appreciate it. Um. Domestic violence is a problem that belongs uh, to all of us. I clearly uh, have not been able to do the work that we've been doing at the Domestic Violence Action Center by myself. These kinds of community partnerships are precious gifts because it's only with the collective voice and effort of all of us that we can make a small dent. Uh, the world hasn't changed uh, that much. Our social norms haven't changed that much. Our values really haven't changed as much as uh, we like. And so we have to keep the short-term and the long-term visions uh, alive. Safe on Scene is a short-term vision where we will partner, as has been described, with uh, police officers responding to domestic violence calls in District 7 and District 6, which actually goes from uh, the Punahou area out to Hawaii Kai. Um, from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m., which is when the greatest incidence of domestic violence occurs. This opportunity is going to make a huge difference in the lives of the families who are lucky enough to have uh, the Safe on Scene advocates 
in partnership with the Honolulu Police Department. The support from the, the mayor and the city is, is, like I said, a precious gift. We can't do this without money. Uh, funding support has got to be stable, and it's got to um, be available for those moments when we actually invent a new idea that can respond to domestic violence, along with the other things that are currently in place. So uh, we're in 100%. So thank you so much. Unless you want to say you're going to be looking for people. Oh, yeah. So the other thing is we are in the active recruitment stage uh, for staffing the program. So if anyone who is uh, watching us today is interested in uh, serving the community and working with the Domestic Violence Action Center, they could reach out to us and maybe call our helpline even and get our, uh, our address. Our helpline number is 531-3771. And all the information you need to uh, submit an application uh, to join us in this important work, uh, you can receive uh, by calling the helpline. Thanks for reminding me of no, that. No, thank you. Yeah. Nancy. Yeah. You know, with that, why don't you just say, so we're just going to open up to questions. I hope that this is just another step in that direction. You yeah. said we haven't changed ourselves enough, yeah. but we're going to keep working time. one day yeah. at a time to improve ourselves. And I you know, want to thank all everyone here. And if there's any questions for Nancy or anyone else, please feel free to ask. Um, I think it's interesting you said between 2 p.m. and or, or 2 p.m. and right. 11 p.m. at night. Uh, I think most people would think domestic violence might occur, you know, in overnight. Um, but just can you talk a little bit about that time frame? It's just interesting. Well, people are returning home from work, families are uh, gathered, um, the uh, stress of the day and the uh, dynamics that occur in a battering relationship are coming to life um, at the end of the day, mostly. Um, by the time it's overnight, um, either a person has escaped to safety or the police have intervened or uh, the situation has... Um, dissipated. So we're hoping to uh, meet the problem when it occurs, which is, that's what, that's what the data is teaching us, is that the highest incident is during that, that time frame. And you say you're referring to people. Are you looking for um, clinical psychologists or um, social workers? Or uh, we are, what are the requirements? The requirements are, are pretty basic. I mean, we will provide the necessary training. Uh, you don't have to have a, a, an advanced degree to, to do this work. Um, you certainly are welcome if you do, but that's not an expectation. Um, some education, some experience working with survivors of domestic violence, maybe even being a survivor of domestic violence, uh, having used the system or uh, had police respond to you would be very helpful in terms of knowing what to expect and how to help somebody as they make uh, the journey to safety. Now, so what do you think? Part of it is you've got to have compassion. Right. You gotta have You'll, a lot of compassion and, and gotta, patience, and patience, and yeah. also be able to handle stress yeah. um, in that situation to calm everyone down. Yeah. Well, I mean, calming is is part of it, but it's really more um, being amenable to what the person is experiencing, yeah. which doesn't always look the same. I mean, it's not exactly the same. Really, the crisis and the safety planning are the key goals. We want to make sure that the steps taken after the crime has occurred involve better safety and options for moving forward. Because it is my understanding that one of the toughest, these are some of the toughest um, cases that officers do respond to because you don't know what's on that side. You don't know how that person is going to react. Right. Correct. So having that support there for the victim, for officers to kind of handle the... Well, it, it definitely provides uh, officers an opportunity to focus on what they need to be focusing on without becoming entangled with the crisis and um, the uncertainty that the victim and the children are experiencing. So, you know, Perhaps on that, it reminds me, you know, um, Nicole, that there have been situations, very tragic situations, where a police officer has been called to a scene of domestic violence and they themselves have been killed. It's a dangerous, heated situation mm -hmm. where the police should be focusing on the danger, right. and your your person is helping provide support right. for the victim. I don't know, Chief McCall, if you want to talk about that, but I know there's been a couple situations in the past where officers have been uh, killed. Nationwide, come, uh, come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. nationwide, it's still one of the most dangerous calls that uh, police officers go to. Um, you, the, like he said, the, um, the situation is fluid. You never know um, once you calming down the wife and you turn around to arrest the husband, the wife's going to jump on your back because she doesn't want you to take her husband. It's, it's very uh, 
a very dangerous situation. So we always send two officers to domestic violence calls, two officers. And with this program, we'll be able to send two officers to focus on what they need to do and then have the advocate talking to the victim about what she needs to do instead of just giving her a referral cut. Okay. Any other questions? Well, I want to thank our men and women in blue. Thanks for what you do every day, really. And most of the time, we don't know what you're doing, but you're making us, keeping us safe. And Nancy, thanks for what you do. I don't know what we'd do without your organization overall. Not indispensable. Thank you, but we really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for covering this. And we'll hang around a few minutes if you want to do one-on-ones with any of the officers or with Nancy. Okay, and Gary, too. <laughs> but Gary, thank you for the money. No problem. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys.